Hello and welcome to Dove Biology Apes Lessons to Go. This is Environmental History Learning from the Past. In a previous video, we saw how human cultural revolutions altered the environment. In this video, we'll be focusing on the environmental history of the United States. The environmental history of the United States could be divided into four distinct eras. The Tribal Era, the Frontier Era, the Conservation Era, and the Environmental Era. The first is our Tribal Era. The Tribal Era encompasses the 10,000 years prior to the arrival of the Europeans in 1607. During this time, between 5 to 10 million native people hunted, gathered, and mastered basic agriculture. Now, due to having small populations and simple technology, there was a low environmental impact. The frontier era began in the early 1600s with the arrival of the European colonists. These early settlers found a vast continent with abundant, perhaps inexhaustible forests and wildlife and rich soils. These settlers considered the land to be a frontier full of beasts and savages that were meant to be conquered. And so began many years of environmental degradation as forests were cut down for the materials to build the cities to house these new settlers. Many species were hunted in mass for food and materials to be able to clothe this growing populace. In many ways, the frontier attitude is still a part of American culture. Many people still see um, the United States as a vast continent of perhaps inexhaustible resources. Now, around 1832 to 1870, many people became alarmed at the scope of resource depletion and degradation that had occurred during that frontier era, and they urged the government to preserve the wilderness. Some of the early conservationists include Henry David Thoreau and George Perkins Marsh. Henry David Thoreau um, wanted to understand more about the nature, so he went and built a, um, a cabin along the banks of Walden Pond in Massachusetts, and as a result wrote uh, an environmental classic called Life in the Woods. George Perkins Marsh Marsh is probably the very first environmental scientist. He was trying to use scientific studies and case studies of past civilizations to explore conservation and resource use. At the heart of the conservation era, two environmental ideals began to develop, that of the conservationalist and that of the preservationalist. The conservation idea is that the wilderness and other public lands are resources to be used to enhance the nation's economic growth and provide the greatest benefit to the greatest amount of people. This idea was championed by President Theodore Roosevelt. On the other hand, the preservationist ideal saw public lands as something that should remain untouched so that they can be enjoyed today and passed unspoiled to future generations. And this idea was championed by founder of the Sierra Club, John Muir. The conservationists would see forests as potential fuel and building materials, whereas the preservationists would see a forest as habitat for wildlife and a place to visit for camping and hiking. The split between the preservationists and the conservationists can be best illustrated by the Hetch Hetchy controversy. In 1901, conservationists wanted to best use Hetch Hetchy Valley as a reservoir for water for the people of San Francisco. By damming the valley, they would uh, allow it to flood, and then they would have a water source for the people of San Francisco. The preservationists, headed by John Muir, wanted to preserve the valley as a national park for future generations to enjoy. After a 12-year bitter, bitter battle, the conservationists won and the valley was flooded. But interestingly enough, the controversy still continues today as preservationists seek to remove the dam to restore Hetch Hetchy Valley to its previous glory and uh, name it a national park. There were many other major events that took place during the conservation era. President Theodore Roosevelt established wildlife reserves and tripled the size of national forests. In 
He established the U.S. Forest Service in 1905, with Gifford Pinchot as the first chief. Pinchot pioneered the concept of a sustainable yield, determining mathematically the maximum number of things that can be harvested so that it can be renewed. The Antiquities Act of 1906 allowed the president to protect areas of scientific or historical interest on federal lands as nat national monuments. Now, in 1907, Congress banned executive withdrawals of public forests because they thought Roosevelt was uh, preserving too much. But it wasn't before Roosevelt reserved another 16 million acres. Now, the conservation era waned in the 1940s and 1950s due to preoccupation with World War II and the economic recovery that was necessary after the war. In the 1960s, though, there was an environmental reawakening and the beginning of what we call the environmental era. Citizens were urging the government to improve environmental quality. Much of this was spurned on by the works of Rachel Carson, an environmental scientist who wrote Silent Spring, which was a documentation of the harmful effects of pesticides uh, on air, water, and wildlife. Additionally, we had our first photo of Mother Earth. Photographs of Earth from space in 1969 resulted in a spaceship Earth environmental worldview. We realized that the Earth was indeed not infinite, but finite, and we were simply a little blue spaceship floating in space, and so all of the resources that we have or will ever have are on this spaceship Earth. The first Earth Day was held April 20th, 1970s, and it was celebrated by 20 million people. President Richard Nixon established the Environmental Protection Agency in 1970 uh, so that we could have oversight over our environment. The Endangered Species Act was passed in 1973. As a result of these major events, the 70s are oftentimes referred to as the environmental decade. It was also during this time that the Bureau of Land Management received its first real authority to manage public lands under its control with the passage of the Federal Land Policy and Management Act in 1978. As a result of these new regulations, a political campaign known as the Sagebrush Rebellion resulted as miners, ranchers, loggers, developers, farmers, and others joined together to try to greatly reduce government regulation and to persuade legislators to sell or lease these lands to private interests at low costs. In 1977, Jimmy Carter was elected president. As a result of high gas prices, gas shortages, from an oil embargo in the Middle East, Jimmy Carter persuaded Congress to create the Department of Energy with the task of reducing the heavy dependence of the country on foreign oil. With the discovery of a major toxic waste dump near Niagara Falls in New York, uh, he helped to create a super fund as part of the Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act in 1980 uh, designed to help clean up abandoned hazardous waste sites. Additionally, he used the Antiquities Act to triple the land in the National Wilderness System and double the land in the National Park System. During the 80s, though, we saw an environmental backlash. As a result of new environmental regulations from the EPA and the Bureau of Land Management, a lot of political interest groups um, wanted legislation that would reduce those regulations. During this time, uh, Ronald Reagan became president, and he was a self-proclaimed sagebrush rebel, and he greatly increased private energy and mineral development and timber cutting on public lands, and he decreased funding for research on energy conservation and renewable uh, energy resources. The Wise Use Movement was formed in 1988, backed by coal, oil, mining, and other resource use uh, industries. The goal was to find ways to weaken or repeal environmental laws. In 1989, uh, George Herbert Walker Bush was elected for president, and he continued to support the exploitation of valuable resources on public lands and actually allowed some environmental laws to be undercut, even though he promised to be an environmental president. In 
In the 1990s, uh, President uh, Bill Clinton was elected, and there were many grassroots movements that were springing up uh, to try to increase awareness of complex environmental issues. Bill Clinton himself appointed environmentalists to key positions in environmental and resource agencies. And during his tenure, he protected more public land as national monuments in the lower 48 states than any other president before him. Many things happened from 2001 to 2008. George W. Bush became president in 2001 and proceeded to weaken many environmental and public land use laws and policies. Though, in 2006, he did create the world's second largest marine reserve in waters surrounding the Hawaiian Islands. Efforts by public figures like Al Gore brought global warming to the forefront of many Americans' minds during this time. Gas shortages as a result of Hurricane Katrina and the subsequent investment speculation increased gas prices and made alternative energy solutions a hot topic. More recently, we've seen things like the oil spill um, brought on by the explosion of the Deepwater Horizon, the current controversy uh, surrounding the Keystone Pipeline and the bringing of tar sands from Canada to use as an energy source. And of course, climate change and biodiversity loss continue to be hot topics. So one thing remains, can we learn from the lessons of the past or are we destined to repeat them? As a student in environmental science, I hope you consider all the things that have occurred in the United States history so that we can make sure to have a sustainable future.